Hi everybody, uh, today I'm going to do part 2a and 2b of the video lectures I'm doing on how to use the PySyndy code. Uh, in particular, how to make the, make the system identification a little more robust to noise. And today we're going to be talking about differentiating the data with uh, a method other than finite differences and simply adding more data to get more robustness. Uh, so let's, let's jump in, hopefully this will be uh, fairly quick. Uh, so actually, let's uh, define some data with some, um, uh, with some uh, error on it, with, with some added noise. And again, that's going to look like the, the same thing we used in the previous video. Uh, so we're computing the root mean square of the training Lorenz data uh, that we've been using for this series. Uh, we're going to add that to some uh, to our original training data. And actually, we're just going to add 2% uh, noise. Oops. Right, so we're, we're adding 2% uh, Gaussian noise to our training data. Uh, and um, then we're just going to uh, do a normal thing. We're going to, uh, let's just plot what that looks like. So I have this function plot data and derivative x train added noise dt. spell correctly. Okay, right. So this is just going to plot the uh, the noisy training data uh, with this 2% added noise and its derivative. Uh, and uh, as you can see, I'm using normal finite differences. And uh, what you can see from this plot, so the, the, top, uh, the top plots here are the uh, plot in of this variable x in time, uh, same thing for y and z. And then the bottom ones are showing x dot, y dot, and z dot. And you can see that even though this, this noise on top of the data is pretty small, uh, when you take finite differences, that noise gets amplified. Uh, and you can see these derivatives are really noisy. Uh, and that's problematic because this, the uh, sparse regression problem we're solving is fitting x dot. Uh, so this, this noisy data is going to uh, screw up our sparse regression problem. Um, so uh, how, do you, how do you fix this? Uh, well, finite differences aren't the only way to differentiate data, and one, uh, one sort of easy improvement you can do is just use smoothed finite differences. Uh, so this just applies some smoothing filter before you do the finite differences, uh, but there are actually a whole host of other differentiation methods available that you can use to, uh, to avoid amplifying the noise in this way. Uh, so if we just uh, do the same thing, but we use these smooth finite differences, uh, you can see that the, the x dot, y dot, and z dot here are uh, much easier to see and, um, and sort of clearly are following the data, uh, even though there is still some substantial noise on top of them. Uh, but these, this is a sort of an easy trick that if you have some minor noise, uh, you can really improve your sparse regression algorithm by just uh, using a better differentiator. So that's, uh, that's 2a, pretty easy. Uh, now, uh, 2b is also pretty easy. So 2b is just simply add more data. Um, so uh, it, it turns out we actually let you, uh, if you have like 40 different trajectories of the same system, you can just string them along one, uh, one against the other and uh, put the whole thing in as one big time series. Um, and uh, our model will just fit that. And that, that tends to improve the system, even if there's uh, noise on top of it. Uh, because you just have more data to fit in the regression problem. So here we're going to use uh, 40 different uh, Lorenz trajectories. So um, we're going to randomly uh, initialize 40 different initial conditions. So, and they're all, they're all going to be between uh, minus 10 and so X, Y, and Z initial conditions are all going to be between minus 10 and 10, but otherwise they're, uh, they're totally random. Uh, then we're just going to collect all, the, all this training data, and we're going to loop through these initial conditions. 
So temporary X training data. We're going to uh, solve. So solve IVP is the uh, uh, function you use in Python to uh, solve a differential equation. So we're solving the Lorenz differential system of ODEs. Um, some uh, extra parameters to do the integration. I'm not going to uh, go over here. Pass the initial condition you just defined. And some keywords. So those, these aren't super important. I just have to uh, do the integration to get the new data. Uh, then we're going to just add some, uh, some error again. So let's just uh, copy and paste that over. If I can on this laptop. Right. Uh, great. So um, we we get the mean squared error, and uh, once again, we're going to define this uh, added noise here. So we're going to add two percent noise to each of these forty trajectories, uh, and then fit all forty at once, uh, which you'll which you'll see in a moment. Um, so uh, this will be instead of X train added noise, is we're adding all these uh, training trajectories to this um, X train multiple variable. So this is a, an array of all the 40 different trajectories. Um, and I think that's it for the for loop. And now we just say uh, model is ps.cindy. We're going to, again, name those feature names from before, just so it calls everything x, y, z, which is nice for our system. Um, optimizer, let's just use a simple uh, 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 sequentially threshold least squares. If I don't specify the threshold, the, the, the lambda actually just defaults to 0 0.1, uh, which for Lorenz is, is quite convenient. Uh, so we're just going to leave it there. Uh, and then we just uh, fit the data. Pass the time step, and then the last thing you need to do is multiple trajectories is true. And this is just a flag uh, that basically you're, you're fitting multiple Lorenz training trajectories. Uh, and so it, it sort of figures that out and, and allows you to use the functionality. Um, and then uh, we just print the model. Let's just run for a second. And great, okay, so we added 2% uh, noise, but with this nice string of 40 trajectories together, uh, we can pretty much recreate the correct uh, Lorenz system you see above you. Um, and uh, uh, note, note here, I haven't actually defined beta before, but beta is usually 8 thirds, uh, so 2.666. Uh, so this is pretty darn close. Uh, and you, you can check for yourself that this actually outperforms if you just use a single trajectory. Um, but this, you know, this is pretty sensible that as you add uh, sort of more data to your regression, your regression has more points to sort of uh, figure out the dynamics in the system. Uh, so that's uh, part two, parts 2A and 2B, showing some very simple examples of how to get some extra noise robustness. And in the next sections, I'm going to show some more advanced uh, methods for getting robustness against noisy data. Uh, so thanks for listening, and uh, please follow up on the next video.